Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will show you the differences between sealed classes, enum classes and sealed interfaces because all of these are so similar but also different in some way. You will learn when you should actually use which in your Android projects. So I'm on an empty Android Studio project and I first of all want to talk about what these types of classes are actually used for. These are used when you want to kind of group different related options together in a class. So let me give you an example and I will create a class here called HTTP error. As you will probably know, we have different types of HTTP error messages we can get from an API. For example, 404 uh, not found, we have 401 uh, that you're unauthorized, we have 403 forbidden, and there are a bunch more like internal server error, tons of error messages. And instead of just having the error code, which is just a pure integer, we could kind of group these errors together to have them in a more readable way. And that's what we can use sealed classes for. Here we have a sealed class HTTP error. And a sealed class is in the end just an abstract class where all the children, like all the classes that in, uh, inherit from this class, are known at, at compile time. That means there are no other modules that can extend this class. So let's say you would get such a sealed class from a library, which is another module, then you wouldn't be able to actually extend this class and actually write your own class that inherits from it. That only works in that specific module where it's declared. However, on the other side, if you have an abstract class, you could do that if that would come from a library that you write your own version of that abstract class. So let's see how that works. We have our sealed class HTTP error here. And we could now define different subclasses of that HTTP error class that kind of describe our different error messages we want to distinguish. So for example, we have an object unauthorized. And that inherits from HTTP error. Or we might have an object not found, which is an HTTP error. And the cool thing about this is that all these subclasses of, of HTTP error are known at compile time. That means if we now have such an HTTP error in our code, let's say that is um, an HTTP error, and we set it to HTTP error dot not found. And we then want to check what kind of error that is. Let's say you get that from another class. Then you could use a win expression. And since all of these subclasses are known at compile time, we have an exhaustive when block here. So we can press Alt Enter here. We can say add remaining branches and it adds all of these branches and our when block doesn't complain that there is no else option. Something we can also do with sealed classes is that we can give them a constructor. Just like with abstract classes, we could say, okay, we actually want to attach an error code here because each HTTP error actually has a code that represents this error. And now we of course need to pass this error message, uh, this error code for each single error class or object we actually have here. So unauthorized would be 401 and not found would be 404. And then here we could simply also just access the code using error.code. That is probably nothing new to you. Let's now see how that works with enum classes. Let's write an equivalent enum class because enum in the end also just enumerates, that's why it's called enum, it enumerates a set of options um, that yeah, kind of relate to the same thing or that are just different options for the same thing. In our case, our HTTP error here. So let's go here and say enum class, HTTP error, let's just call it enum. And we can also give this a constructor, like val code is an integer, and we can open the class body. And now the way we actually declare these child classes here is different from HTTP error. So these are actually not child classes. Instead, these are just kind of constants you can think of. And we simply, yeah, put them in here separated by commas. So we can say unauthorized, pass in our 401 code, then we put a comma, and then we have not found with 404. And if we then go ahead to main activity and actually just copy this block of code, paste it here, have our error enum, is an HTTP error enum. Then we could also set this to not found, HTTP error enum not found, put this here. And here we actually don't say HTTP error like this, we say HTTP error enum not found. And here HTTP error enum unauthorized. And then we basically have the equivalent code here. You can see the when block is also exhaustive, so we don't need to specify an else option. Let me quickly get rid of these to-do statements so we get rid of this error message um, like this. So um, with enum classes, we also have an exhaustive when block. So 
Till now, everything's actually exactly the same when using a SEAL class and when using an enum class. So what the heck is actually the difference? Actually, we can also put in functions in both of these. So function do something, which we could call, we could also make this abstract if we would want that. And then of course, both of our objects would need to implement that. And we can also do this here with enums. We would actually need to finish this up with a semicolon and then say function do something. So that's also the same. What's now the difference? Well, the difference is that with enum classes, we really deal with constants, while with HTTP, uh, with C classes, in this case with our HTTP error class, we deal with individual instances. So when we create such an HTTP error instance of like an unauthorized, in this case, it would always be the same since we use a singleton here, but we could also use data classes here or normal classes. So we could have a data class unauthorized and we could give this a reason, for example. So why are we unauthorized? There could be multiple reasons. Maybe we didn't attach a token. Maybe the token is invalid or so. So there could be two unauthorized errors and both could have a different reason. So therefore there could also be two different instances of this specific data class and of this specific HTTP error. However, with enum classes, we're not able to do that. There is no, no way to actually make um, a child here of this enum class have its individual behavior, its individual kind of variables and um, parameters you actually pass to it. No, you actually need to, need to declare a variable or you can declare a variable that you pass to all the children of that enum class, like the code, which all HTTP errors have in common. But if some HTTP errors are actually different than others, then you can do that with enum classes. So in the end, a SEAL class just offers you more customization possibilities if you actually need these. So does that now mean you should always use SEAL classes and never use enum classes because SEAL classes are just like enum classes, but offer more customization? No, that doesn't mean that. I would always ask myself when you need to distinguish between different values, is it fine if these are actually constants? So if you only have variables in the constructor and if none of your child classes like these single errors here needs individual behavior in form of functions and variables, like individual behavior would be having such a reason for unauthorized, but not needing a reason for not found, because when it's not found, the reason is pretty clear. If you don't need that, I would use enum classes because let me show you something. Here, um, enum classes actually offer something SEAL classes don't offer. And that is, since all these values are known at compile time and are constant, we can also go ahead and say HTTP error enum dot values. And that gives us an array of all possible values, which we could simply loop over, for example. So if we would like to print all possible error, uh, HTTP errors that we have, we could simply use this enum class, say dot values, and say like for each, and yeah, just print each value and that would work. However, since with sealed classes, each single, inst uh, each single child could be its own instance or actually is its own instance, that doesn't work because I mean, what should it print if every unauthorized error can have its own reason? So if you would actually want to print all HTTP errors that you have in the sealed class, you would actually need to create your own list where you put in all these different um, types of classes. And if you have a data class, you would need to say, okay, that's actually the reason. Um, but if you only have objects, then you would still need to create your very own list and then loop over that. So in that case, I would really prefer having an enum class if you're fine with um, every single child being a constant. So now we compare sealed classes to enum classes, but the title also says sealed interfaces. So what the heck is that? Is that even another thing that I need to worry about? No, actually not. Sealed interfaces are super simple. Um, a lot simpler than the Kotlin uh, documentation actually tells you or shows you. Um, what is a sealed interface? Well, in the end, if you need to distinguish between options and you don't need a variable in the constructor like here, let's say we don't have this code. We don't have it here. We don't have it here. Then what you can do is you can simply make this a sealed interface as well. And you simply get rid of calling the constructor here because interfaces don't have a constructor. And that way you just save a little bit of code. It's just a different way of writing this. So I hope that clarified a little bit when you should actually use which 
If so, please let me definitely know that down below. And also let me know what you want me to make videos about in future, maybe some Kotlin features, maybe something about Android. Just let me know that down below. And if it gets some upvotes, then I will definitely consider making a video about that topic. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing rest of the week and see you back in the next video. Bye bye.